All right, this is Christian. Welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk about how to become a developer from scratch in six months. Although I find it um, pretty difficult, I would tell you what I would do right now if I would have to take this challenge on, okay? So assuming you know nothing about this, I would give you some rough guidelines that you can follow, that you can look up to and to assess where you are right now in your journey, okay? And besides the technical part, I'm gonna give you some, um, some tools that you can use while you are not coding as well, okay? So to become a front-end developer, a web developer in 2021 and beyond, you need uh, a few skills, right? You need to know HTML, you need to know CSS, you need to know JavaScript, and then you need a library that's built on top of JavaScript that will allow you to build applications, okay? So, how long would I take to learn HTML and CSS? Well, HTML and CSS, they're not programming languages, so it should be fairly easy for you to pick up the tags and the syntax that you have to use for CSS, okay? So I would assume that if you are practicing it quite a lot, maybe in one or two weeks, you'll be proficient with HTML and CSS. It's about how much time you put in, of course, but it's also about how much you practice while you're not practicing. And I'm gonna talk about this later, okay? So in two weeks, you should be able to be proficient with CSS and the skill that you need to pick up while uh, working with HTML and CSS, let me just stop my Discord, is seeing everything as a box, okay? So if you open any website, if you are seeing this right now on YouTube, look at the web page and see the boxes, okay? So you have to practice seeing the boxes, the components as uh, I call them. And you can even print, you can make a screenshot of your screen and then take another tool like um, Paint in Microsoft Windows, that's, that's how it's called. Or in Mac, you have like a tool that you just double click on the image and then you start drawing boxes around and start to see the boxes, okay? Start to see how they align, start to see how would you use Flexbox and stuff like that. Some people, when they are learning H uh, when they are learning CSS, they think they have to learn Flexbox and Grid. While Grid is popular right now, maybe for some people or with some people, I don't think it's a necessary skill to learn. It's definitely something that you can do uh, you can learn later after you get a job, in my opinion. But I do think that you should learn Flexbox pretty well. And there are a few properties that you want to learn uh, with Flex, okay? The first one, display Flex, then uh, align items, justify content, and Flex direction, okay? If you know these three properties, I can assure you that you can build pretty much anything with with just those three properties, okay? So HTML, practicing the boxes, CSS, practice Flexbox, uh, the three properties, align items, justify content, and flex direction, okay? With these three, you'll do wonders, okay? And if you practice a lot, you'll be able to get really good at it really fast, okay? I would suggest to you to go on Dribble, dribble.com with triple B, and find a few design ideas, click on web design, I think, and then take a few designs from there, some simple ones, and then start replicating them in CodePen. Start with that and then end up building a website of your choice. Um, the one I tell my students to build is the Nike website. So go on nike.com and then try to replicate that website using HTML and CSS, okay? Once you know that, that means you are pretty good at HTML and CSS, you have the 20% that's gonna give you 80% of the results, okay? Now, once you finish that, it's time to get into JavaScript, okay? And with JavaScript, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind. First of all, it's a programming language, so you'll hit the wall, especially if you come from HTML and CSS, and you have to expect that, and then you have to embrace that, okay? It's gonna take maybe a month or so until you understand the concepts. Concepts such as data types, data structures, functions, loops, if else statements, uh, things of that nature. And then it's gonna take you a while until you can put them together and understand how they work uh, together. Because any application, any uh, functionality that a website has is built from smaller functions, okay? And then when you start to see that, you'll be able to decompose or deconstruct any application that you'll be using, okay? Slowly but surely. It's like when you're a musician, I used to be a musician before I was a signed Spotify artist. I've done a bunch of things in my life and one of them was being a musician. 
And one of the skills that I had to pick up was to be able to listen to just one instrument. So when I was trying to create a drum pattern, I was listening to songs and I was only listening to the drums, okay? So I was able to ignore the bass line, I was able to ignore the vocals, the synths, etc., etc. So you have to create this ability, that this skill that when you look at a website, when you look at an application, you can start to see the individual pieces of functionality, okay? And that's gonna help you learn programming faster. The reason why this is important is because you need to know the what and then you'll find the how. A lot of people are focusing on the how rather than the what. Because if you know that you have a button and then when you click on the button you want to open a model, it's going to be fairly easy for you to find out the how. But if you don't know what you want to achieve, it's going to be very difficult for you to find the, the how and you, it's going to be difficult for you to understand what you're actually doing or whatever you are copying from YouTube or from your tutorials. Okay, so keep this in mind, the what, not the how. Now, there are, there are a few stages, right? The first stage is when you are overwhelmed by the information and that's gonna take a month or so, as I said. And then after that is the period of desperation when you are a duck, okay? So this is where most people fail and they end up in something called tutorial hell. The reason why they fall in tutorial hell is because they have no direction, they have no plan, they have no roadmap, okay? And also they don't know if what they're doing is right or wrong. They, are, they don't know if the thing that they are doing right now actually makes sense, actually works, okay? And that's why they stay in this loop and they start buying a bunch of courses and a bunch of, uh, they read a bunch of books and tutorials and try to figure things out. But you have to find a way to push through this phase, okay? Because this phase should take a month as well, okay? The way I do it with my students is I tell them exactly what they have to do. Like you have to build this application, then this application, then this application. And then because they have the what, they'll find out, they'll find the how, okay? And that's when they learn because you have to become really good at Googling stuff, okay? And you have to be resilient, you have to be persistent and you have to be ready to suck for a while, okay? Now, this phase will end at some point and then until now you only worked with JavaScript, okay? By the time of, by the time this phase ends, let me just get some coffee. By the time this phase ends, you should understand and be worried of the limitations that JavaScript has, okay? And now you'd look into a library or a framework. The library that I recommend is called React. It's pretty popular, maybe you've heard of it. And what you have to do is you basically have to redo everything you've done with JavaScript, but you have to make those things with React, okay? As you do that, you'll get familiar with React. You'll start to understand the, the, the main features or benefits of React, which are the components, state and props. And you'll start to learn how to architect an application because until now, if you work just with JavaScript, you just practiced your programming skills, if I can say, how to break down a problem. But now you need to learn a new skill, which is architecting an application, time management, being able to estimate the things that you are doing. And this will take some time as well, okay? And this is the moment where you have to finish, yes, finish understanding what React is and finish those applications that you've redone in React, the ones that you've done in JavaScript. But now you have to create a project for yourself, okay? Uh, a portfolio project. A, a bunch of people are doing the weather app, the to-do app, with React and Redux, which is cool, but that's not for your portfolio. That's for practice. Now, I've shared once or twice one of my students' portfolios, and um, they are quite complicated and take they take quite a lot of time, maybe three months, maybe four months to complete. And the reason why I they take so long to complete those projects is because that's how they build ex experience, okay? A lot of people have just exposure to different technologies, but what you need is experience, and that means you have to stick with something long enough in order for you to build it. So this would be the timeline that I would set for someone if they would start from scratch. Obviously it depends on how much, how determined you are, okay, to do all these things that I'm telling you. It depends on if you have some skin in the game when doing these things and if you want it bad enough, you know, because some people they just say they want it, but when it comes to actually implementing these ideas, they don't really do it, you know, because they are unsure, uncertain, they have FOMO, they have, they think that the grass is greener on the other side and they jump from course to course, tutorial to tutorial. Maybe they even go to a bootcamp and they end up building the same lame projects, the calculator, the to-do app, the weather app, 
which are fine for learning, but not fine to show a potential employer because I'll tell you, everyone saw those projects before and there is no originality in there. Also, don't copy uh, projects from courses, right? You have to make something from scratch because if you don't make something from scratch, if you get a job and you have to make something from scratch, you'll feel like a massive imposter because you've never actually done it. Okay, now I'll give you a few things that you have to think about while going through this. You have to code when you're not coding. What does that mean? Well, coding is a mental exercise. And even if you are not in front of your computer, you should still think about coding, okay? You should still practice writing HTML and CSS in your brain as you're going towards your work, as you are drinking your coffee, as you are on the toilet seat, as you are cooking, you should be coding all the time, okay? You should be creating layouts, you should be solving problems, you should be writing const something equals something, var something equals something. You should practice that syntax in your brain because if you are just coding when you're in front of your computer, especially in the beginning, you are just make, uh, you're gonna have a disadvantage, okay? I'm talking from my own experience, that's how I am. I shoot these videos in my head all the time before I even start the camera, okay? And one, interesting exercise that I've heard is like some sort of meditation. So what you have to do is you have to go for a walk, okay? You finish, you are stuck on something or you finish some exercise or some action point that you had today and you have to go out for a walk and you have to start thinking about what you just learned and you have to keep practicing what you just learned, okay? And you'll notice that your mind will start to wander, okay? You think about building this layout in your, in your mind, okay? And then you start thinking about what you're gonna have for dinner later. When you catch yourself having that thought, you have to bring your mind back to your project that you're writing in your mind. And you keep doing that, and that's how you build focus, okay? And then you'll see that you'll have some crazy results. You'll start dreaming about code. <laughs> you'll start creating this passion for yourself, okay? But keep in mind that if you are desperate, about this, you'll not be able to learn it, okay? Uh, I've seen some horror stories from boot camps where people are going there and they are burnt out, they are learning to go for like 12 hours and they cry, they, they feel like they will not make it. You cannot learn like that. So you have to go at your own pace. That's why my program, for example, it's you get, you work with me until you get paid, until you get your first job. Because I understand that some people need time to get warmed up and you cannot throw someone in, in to work for 12 hours. I'm not even working 12 hours. I'm working maybe four hours per day at my day job, okay? And you have to understand that this is a long-term game, even though you should have some urgency as well. You don't wanna linger around for one or two years. You wanna do it as fast as possible, but on your own time, okay? So this would be my tips if I would have to make this career change in six months. I think it's possible, but it's, it's a stretch, you know? I would say nine months, it's more realistic. Nine months is more realistic. And it's also important how determined you are. Okay, everyone is different and everyone has different goals. Everyone has different backgrounds. Everyone has different life experiences. Your age matters, okay? Um, your ch the, the way you've learned in school matters, okay? So you might have to make, have some catch-ups with your learning process, okay? You might have to set that thing up and then you have to have realistic expectations. Whenever I have a an onboarding call with someone, I look at their situation and then if they are 20, I give them certain um, things to look out for. If they are 40, I'm giving them different other things to look out for, okay? Because from my experience, people learn at different paces. And yeah, this is pretty much everything I have for today. Uh, if you are interested in learning uh, more about what I do and if you wanna learn how to code really fast, then feel free to apply for a free consultation call. There is a link somewhere here in the description. I'll show you how to get really good at code really, really fast. And if you want to work with me and I think you'd be a good fit, I'm gonna offer you that. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave this video a like, subscribe for more content. I'm gonna post more React content soon. I was just busy traveling. I came back to Warsaw. I live now in an Airbnb drinking coffees and I'm gonna settle myself here for a few months, I think, and then I'm gonna be off to Russia, maybe. I'm thinking either St. Petersburg or Moscow. I'm, I'm just worried about the weather there because it's gonna be winter soon. It's gonna be awful, but there are pros and cons with that as well. It's not too bad in Poland. I kind of miss Croatia, to be fair. But maybe next year I'm gonna go to Mexico and I'm gonna live there for a longer period of time. Until next time.
Cheers.